want to speak about trouble and being troubled. Job uh, 5 verse 7, Yet man is born in unto trouble, and as the sparks fly upward. Job uh, 14 verses 1 and 2, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. We often find that, don't we? You know, we have much trouble in these lives that we live in. He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. In other words, we're all going to die one day. You know, are you ready for death? The only way we can be ready for death is if we've had forgiveness for our sins. And the only way we can have forgiveness for our sins is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by putting our faith in Him. Do you like the way to heaven? God bless you. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 15 verses 3 and 4 For uh, now, for a long season, Israel hath been without the true God. There's only one true and living God and we see him fully displayed in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And without a teaching priest and without law. But when they, uh, but when they in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. So that just proves the fact that we're in, if we're in trouble, if we realise that we're sinners in the sight of God, which we all are, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, if we realise that, we come to Christ for salvation, our soul will be saved. All we've got to do is uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. At Nahum uh, chapter 1 and verse 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Lord Jesus Christ had times when he was troubled. At John 11 verses 32 to 35, Then when uh, Mary was come where Jesus uh, was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. This was a man called uh, Lazarus. He was uh, the brother of Mary and Martha, and uh, he died. And the Lord Jesus came and he resurrected him. He, he brought him back from, from the dead. And so you and I need to be brought back from the dead, as it were, spiritually speaking. You and I are dead spiritually in God's sight. He wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be you, this other. You can get right with God. You can have forgiveness for your sins and have a home in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ and your right response to Him. You've got to receive Him as your Saviour. Yes, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yes, um, uh, she fell down at his feet, fell down, this is Mary, fell down at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. She knew that in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ there can never remain death. He's the author of life. He's the author and finisher of faith. He can save your soul this hour, my friend, and that's what he wants. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins so that you can enter into heaven. The only way that's possible is through the once for all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, that is Mary, crying, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And here is the shortest verse in the whole of the Bible, the word of God. Jesus wept. And we see the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ upon us, upon Lazarus at that particular point. But he's had compassion upon you and for me and on me in dying on the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul this hour. Will you come to Christ for salvation? Will you put your faith alone in him, the one whom to know 
is life eternal. Yes, in John chapter 12, verses 27 and 28, the Lord Jesus Christ said this, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, that is the hour of his crucifixion. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. John 13, verses 20 and 21. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. In other words, we receive the Father when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not the Father, he's the Son. But the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? Have you put your faith in him? Uh, when Jesus had uh, thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And of course, this is Judas Iscariot. He betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ with a kiss. Mind you, with a kiss, he betrayed him. Psalm 3 and verse 1, uh, Psalm of David, when he fled from Absalom his son, I want to apply this to the Lord Jesus. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Believers have times uh, when they are troubled as well. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 6 to 9, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. This is speaking to believers. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. John 14, verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, originally he went to the cross of Calvary to, to uh, prepare a place for us so that we could be saved. He shed his precious blood upon the cross. One of the soldiers, when they saw that he was dead already, thrust in a spear into his side and forthwith there came out blood and water. That, that blood still has the power to wash your sins away and that's what God wants for you this other. That your sins would be totally blotted out. They'd be washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, in my Father's house uh, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now this is uh, what the Lord Jesus, what we call uh, the rapture of the church, or the translation of the church, if you like. It's the time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air to take the Christians to be forever with himself. There's no need to be left behind. You, be, you can be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. First of all, you need God's salvation. You need to be saved. In other words, you need to have forgiveness for your sins. But the only way is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's able to forgive you of all of your sins, my friend. And that's what he came to do. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And because you and I are all sinners, he came to save us. Every, each and every one of us, when we're born into this world, we are sinners. God wants to make you into a saint. God wants to give you his righteousness so that you can enter into heaven. You cannot be in heaven because of your sin. None of us can. But if we receive the righteousness of God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our soul will be saved and will be on our way to heaven. It's through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not by anything that we have done. But according to his grace and his mercy, he hath saved us, that is, those of us who are saved. Those of us who have been born again, 
Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we need to come to Christ to be saved. Run to Christ this Avo. Put your faith alone in him and be saved for time and for eternity. Once someone's saved, they can never ever lose that salvation. They're born again. Born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, John chapter 14 and verse 27, Peace I leave with you. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you die without forgiveness for your sins, you'll be in an eternal state of trouble in hell and the lake of fire. God does not want you to go down to hell and the lake of fire for eternity. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We need to come and acknowledge, yes, I realise that I am a sinner. Just be honest before God. We cannot pull the wood over God's eyes. We cannot try to trick God in any way. He's not fooled because he's not a fool like you and I. Let God be true, but every man a liar. And so the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. What if, is, does that describe you, this other, that you would believe that there is no God out there? I mean, you look around and see the wonderful creation, all the things that the Lord has made, and then you can turn around and say that there's no God out there, there's no creator. The Word of God says God created all things by Jesus Christ. So that's important, we need to understand that. Lord Jesus Christ is the creator, and he's also the saviour, and he wants to be your saviour this Avo. Will you come to the Lord Jesus Christ in all your sin, in all your need? At John chapter 8, uh, verses 1 to 11, Jesus went uh, unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was uh, taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Now the first mistake they made, the man and the woman had to be both brought. You see, it takes two to tango. In this sort of sin, you need two people, a man and a woman, to commit adultery. And so they were unjust in their judgment here. They brought the woman, who they said was caught in the very act of adultery, but they disregarded the fact that there is a man involved here as well. And so this is the problem. It's partial judgment. It's un unlawful judgment. And so God is not partial in his judgment. He is very fair in his judgment and so if we end up in hell it's our fault because of our sin but God has given you another opportunity and I believe he's given you another opportunity this other to get right with God to receive forgiveness for your sins and the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ he's the one that wants to be your saviour this other will you come to Christ to be saved Yes, yeah, so they just brought the woman who committed adultery instead of bringing the man and the woman. Very unjust uh, judgment here. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Now conscience means, uh, is made up of two separate words. One is con, that is with, and science or conscience means knowledge. So we're with knowledge. And we need to acknowledge the fact that we are sinners. We need to be convicted of our sin. We need to be uh, realise we're sinners in the sight of God so that he can save us. See, if we're not sinners, we don't need salvation, do we? But when we're born in this world, we're all born, born as sinners. And therefore, we all need salvation. We all need forgiveness for those sins. And this is why we have to come into uh, conviction, come under the conviction 
of the Holy Spirit. Conviction concerning our sin. Realising our sinful condition before the Lord, that we can't save ourselves by any way, shape or form, but we've got to come to Christ to be saved. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. We'll never be in heaven apart from him. So we've got to be convicted concerning our sin. We're sinners in the sight of God. We've got to come to God and admit that to him. It's called repentance. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. So they, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning uh, at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So this woman, obviously, she believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. She became a child of God. She put her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this lady was saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you also, this other, if you come to Christ, if you put your faith alone in him, your soul can be saved. You can receive forgiveness for your sins, which means that you can enter into heaven, because we cannot be in heaven without sin. We need forgiveness for those sins. They need to be washed away in the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only perfect man. He's the one that was made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the righteousness of God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Very simple. And that's why many people are missing out on God's salvation, because they think that they can work their way to heaven. We think that, well, you know, if my good works outweigh my bad works, God will let me into heaven. It doesn't work that way. We've got to come to Christ for salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So again, verse 9. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, now when you hear the gospel preached, God wants you to be troubled or convicted about your sin enough so you will turn to Christ for forgiveness. There's only forgiveness found in him. There's no forgiveness outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that you've got to come to know. He's the one that you've got to come to believe upon. You know, the Word of God says, that there was a question asked and... Uh, Says, what must I do to be saved? The answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that can be you, this other. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have a home in heaven for all of eternity. Why? Because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. God wants you to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation and believe upon him. John 16, verses 7 to 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, this is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking to his disciples concerning the Holy Spirit who he would send into the world. Yes, if I depart, I will send him unto you, and when he has come, that is the Holy Spirit, he will reprove, that means convict, the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Do you realize that the worst sin you could ever commit is rejecting Christ? Because there's no forgiveness for that sin. If we reject Christ, we'll end up in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why I'm here, this other. 
give you another opportunity of getting right with God. This is a serious situation we're in. We're heading for the judgment of God in hell and the lake of fire for eternity. But God has, but God commended his love toward us. That means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God has had compassion upon us. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be the sinless sacrifice upon the cross. So if we come to Christ, if we acknowledge that we're sinners, that is repentance, have a change of mind, realize that we're a sinner and admit that to God himself, and then you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. That's what God wants for each and every one of us, that our soul would be saved as a result of putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As I said, the worst sin you could ever commit is rejecting or neglecting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world, that is the devil, is judged. And the devil was judged. The Lord Jesus Christ made a mastery of the devil when he was crucified upon the cross. He's a defeated foe for the believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, for the child of God. What about you? Are you a child of God? Have you been born again? Said to man, be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And so I'll just leave that message with you. You've got to realize you're a sinner. Admit that to God, which is repentance, that change of mind. Then you've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. When we're born in this world, we're children of the devil. That is spiritually speaking in God's sight. He wants you to be born again into his family through faith in his beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you come to Christ this hour and be saved for time and for eternity? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. It's either heaven or hell. It all depends. Your eternal destiny depends on what you've done with the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yes, we're sinners. We're going down to hell. God does not want that. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified for us. He shed his precious blood on the cross for you and for me. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, uh, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.